Hi everyone, I'm Yo and this is Virginia. Welcome back to our YouTube channel, Knowing, Caring and Loving Your Lady Parts. So today we're gonna go over some progressive functional Kegel exercises, some of the exercises that I love to incorporate as my clients get stronger with their pelvic floor to help them prevent any of those nasty things from happening and also to improve their symptoms that they may be having. So let's get started. please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and tell your friends and let's get started. So I'm going to show you some of my favorite exercises with respect to the pelvic floor, how we integrate it functionally. So one of my favorite exercises that I love is called the bridge. And the reason why I love that, and it's not, it's the sort of beginner yoga bridge, but the reason why I love that is it incorporates a lot of your core and also is an anti-gravity position with respect to relaxing the pelvic floor. And in particular, if you have a prolapse or any of that fun stuff going on. So what you're doing is lying your back and then Eugenia's gonna hang out in the corner there. Relax your shoulders down. So initiate the pelvic floor, get that in and squeeze, and then pull in those transversus abdominis muscles, the core. So remember you're getting that pulling in and lift, and you're incorporating the tab. I call it tab, some videos call it TA. I'm lazy when I talk. And then you're going up into a bridge position. So in this position, I'm actually working the hamstrings, the glutes, and I'm actually working the pelvic floor. This is tight, so I'm not keeping things loose, okay? So keep things tight. And you can just hold it here, and sometimes that is enough, okay? And then you relax and you roll down. So I'm rolling down with it, so that works on articulating the spine. Make sure your feet are underneath your knees. So you exhale, hold. Now, if you wanna add a little bit more challenge, so really stabilize, and you wanna lift one leg up, without dropping the opposite pelvis down. So if I try to lift this leg up, what I don't wanna see is you're doing that, okay? And that means, or you could even just slowly lift the toe up and you're still working and just don't quite lift it and release. Or if you want a little bit more challenge and you hold it up and then you release down. And then same thing on the other side. So tighten up, breathe out. Remember you don't never hold your breath. I'm not very good on that side. It's my bad side and then you roll down okay so that is one of my favorite exercises the bridge if you want to progress the bridge exercise so you're using your inner thighs because that's another muscle that you can use to augment the pelvic floor this is a fitness circle that i have just because i've taught pilates but you can easily use a ball or anything that you have at home okay so i'll put the fitness circle where i don't use the ball so i'm putting the ball between my legs and then you're still doing the same bridge exercise, but you're getting your inner thighs working and you're squeezing. My ball's a bit deflated. So I'm in this position here and I'm using my, squeezing my glutes. I'm adding my accessory muscles now, my core, okay? And my pelvic floor is on, my tab, my inner thigh, I'm squeezing. And then I'm in this position here and then I release down. Okay, so that's a good way to bring the adductors in that can help augment the pelvic floor. Another way to progress, your bridge though, is you could go into this position. Remember we lifted one leg up and then you can go into a full lift and you can do circles. This is more of a Pilates exercise, keeping that hip up on the opposite side without dropping, right? And then you release down and then roll. Okay, so if you do it on the other side, hold here, stabilize, okay, lift the foot up and then you circle around, exhale one, two, three, and then release down, okay? So those are ways to pro progress the bridge, but start simple and remember, you always want to work on quality in doing it right, because you can do those wrong and not stabilize. One of the sides is actually hard for me because I have a really bad hip right now, um, so I might not be showing it the best, unfortunately, but that's life, unfortunately. So that's the bridge, and that's one of my favorite ones. 
So this is another one of the exercises that I really like. As I mentioned before, anything standing is more functional and you have to pull against gravity. So your pelvic floor has got to really work to pull against the force of gravity. And then you want to incorporate your transverse abdominis, your, your muscles that give you that postural alignment, um, and then your gluteus medius, which is also a stability muscle, your posterior chain. Okay, so I really like, so if you're washing dishes or anything, it can be really simple. You don't necessarily have to do a yoga pose, but you could even just try to stabilize, pull in your pelvic floor, and pull up groin up. So you're stabilizing here. Your ribs usually have, should, your ribs should be over your hips and not like this or too far forward, remember? And then you just stabilize. And again, what gives you your balance is actually your core muscles. And then you lift your foot up. And then you could just be like, you know, um, doing the dishes. And, and you could even, just the fact that you're moving and trying to stay balanced while you're doing dishes or cutting is actually using your core. And I know how busy moms can be. And then you could, of course, sort of challenge your balance and then move your foot in different places. Okay, if you actually want to incorporate it into a yoga routine, and you've got to excuse me, I'm not a very good demo. I've got a lot of issues going on with my hips, so I might be off balance, so sorry about that. Um, okay, so you can start off and go into warrior one. Okay, and stabilize. Go into warrior three. Okay, hold. Stabilize, go back into warrior one. Okay, that's a great move, I find. Okay, or you can go into a balanced posture and you can go into warrior three. So you're holding it here. And then you go back into this position here or you can go into crane, right? And then you can go back into your warrior three. Now, of course, the other position that I really like and it's very functional is a squat. So you do have to be careful with this if you have any kind of prolapse, but it's such a good exercise that usually you should be fine as long as you're recruiting and not putting a huge weight in front initially, especially depending on the grade of the prolapse. So make sure you check yourself out to make sure nothing is hanging out. And if you have a prolapse, you might wanna have the guidance of a pelvic floor physio. So with respect to the squat, or you can do like a chair pose with yoga, right? You're going down and remember in terms of alignment, right? So you're, it's like you're sitting on the back of your heels. So you go down. Okay. And it's like, I'm sitting in a chair right now like this. I'm not like this with my back and I'm not like this. Um, I can't even do it improperly. Okay. And I should be seeing my second toe. My knee shouldn't be over like this. So this is just good alignment with respect to your knees. And what I want to do before I go into a squat position, you want to be pulling, remember your pelvic floor, groin up, stabilize here. Think of your alignment of your hips too, in terms of symmetry, and I'm not very symmetrical right now. And then I'm going into a squat position, okay? Into this position, and then I come up. So you exhale as you go down. And as you're up, you inhale and you release. So you exhale just to protect the pelvic floor, and that's the hardest part of the exercise. So try not to hold your breath. So again, bringing in the groin, transverse abdominis, make sure your alignment's good. Set your, make sure your pelvis feels like it's in symmetry there. Exhale, engage everything, hold. And here you can maybe add some weights. If you don't have a prolapse, you could even go into your twisted chair, you know, hold it here, whatever you feel like adding or not, and then go down or just hold it or do some repetitions. Okay. If you do have a bit of a prolapse, maybe you can change it up and do a wall squat, which isn't as functional, but you still working some of the similar muscles. And of course, as a progression, I really like adding the muscles in the back, the posterior chain, the multifidus, all of those muscles, because anything that helps to increase your core stability will work with the pelvic floor. So I really like the Superman exercise. You're lying in your stomach. And again, pulling in the pelvic floor with the transverses, relaxing your shoulder blades down and in. So you're working the stability muscles of your scapula, your shoulder blade too. And you can start with lifting one leg up and the other. So I know this doesn't seem like it's a lot, but when you're working with stability muscles, you actually, they don't burn like when you're doing crunches, which isn't my favorite exercise. And it's funny because I'm a pelvic floor physio. So, I mean, I'm a Pilates instructor, so you'd think that I would like those exercises. Um, but since being a pelvic floor physio, physio I've really modified those. Um, and in particular for people who have prolapses. So, sorry, that's a bit of an aside. So, 
So think of scapular stabilization, slide your shoulder blades down and in. Stabilize and get your pelvic floor working with your transversus, lift one leg up and then the other. And what you wanna do is lift it without feeling that you have too much twisting going on with your back. What you can do is you can even put a little bit of a ball there and feel that it's not rotating because that's the idea. Those little muscles that stabilize with your core abdominals called the multifidus works on keeping things from twisting. And then as you progress, you can add your opposite arm and leg. So usually you want to have your thumb up towards the ceiling. You're still sliding your shoulder blades down and in though, working those. And then you can go in and progress and go in what's called a swimming exercise. And you shouldn't be wiggling all over the place and you're stabilizing here, okay? And then I usually finish off with a nice stretch, which feels good. The other exercise, of course, I really like is, yes, I do like the plank, but what I want you to do is try to set the plank and make sure that you're bringing in the transverse abdominis and the pelvic floor and doing the groin up pull, okay, in that sequence and going into a plank. And then bring in the scapular muscles, the stability muscles at the bottom of the shoulder blade, okay? In this position here, and I'm gonna like down here, if you can see, squeezing them down and in. So it's that down and in, and you're not hiking your shoulders up. Those are the muscles that stabilize more in the shoulder blade area, like you're squeezing a toonie. So you can always start, and I usually get people to start more with a simple plank in this position. Okay, you're, you're stabilizing everything, and then go into this position here, okay, where you're just holding it. And of course, if you want to progress, slide your shoulders down and go into a full plank and hold. Okay. But you want to be careful in terms of pressures again, especially if you have a prolapse, that you're still breathing and the pressure is well dispersed within that pelvic cavity. Last but not least, I love the side plank because you're working on a different stability. Again, let's start with the short one, the short lever. So again, stabilize through the groin up. Okay, I like it on my elbow in this position. You can also do it in this position and then you're working the muscles around your shoulder blade quite a bit. Okay, so in this position here, so you can start and you just hold here. So in this position, make sure you're not hiking your shoulder blade up because that'll hurt your neck. So your shoulder is sliding down and then you can add your leg up like this and you're stabilizing and trying not to feel any movement through your torso and then release down, right? So you can add lever that way, or of course you can come up this way and then add the full one if you want. Okay, and then of course, if you want to stabilize and add more, you add the leg up. So these are ways to start, but start really easy. And then of course, like I said, if you want to do this one here, which is more a Pilates one too that I've done before, you'll get a little bit more work on your shoulder, Actually, we usually start with this with Pilates. So you start with your heel in the front and then you come up, your hands underneath your shoulders. And then again, here you can add just the lever of the leg and do circles and feel like you're not moving anything around so you shouldn't be wiggling. And then if you wanna go up, you come in this position here. So if you wanna work a little harder from there, you go into this position here where your legs are crossed Okay, and then stabilize, and then even harder, you stack your feet and hold. And then of course, even harder, you can add the star position. So thanks everybody for tuning in with Virginia and I to this video about functional integration of those Kegels and some of my favorite best exercises for working those lady part or pelvic floor muscles functionally and day to day. And remember, you can just incorporate some of those Kegels whenever you can. So it doesn't feel like you're spending extra time with them. Like I said, at the sink, balancing, any of those exercises are wonderful. Squatting down, do a few more squats as you lift the laundry, making sure you engage the pelvic floor with the core. So thank you so much, everybody. We look forward to seeing you soon. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and tell your friends and we look forward to seeing you soon.